The topic of this unit is uh, isogeny-based cryptography, and isogenies are some special maps between elliptic curves. So I'll start by defining what an elliptic curve is. So <laughs> the algebraic geometrists would say an elliptic curve is a smooth projective plane curve of genus 1 with at least one point. Now that is absolutely correct, and as many jokes go, absolutely useless. We like to work with elliptic curves in cryptography where we have some form of, well, where we can represent them, we can write down the equation for that. And the nice part is from this definition, we can actually uh, use the theorem de Thurima and Roch, which um, gives us an explicit form of this elliptic curve. So saying, okay, it has at least one curve and has genus one, that tells us something about, well, there are some coordinates which have certain singularities, and so then we can fill in this form. So the important part to see here is that it's monic and x squared, cubed and y squared, and that, well, okay, there are some lower order terms. Um, the coefficients do make sense if you give x weight 2 and y weight 3, then the sum for all those has uh, weight 6 when you add the indices. And so this is um, an elliptic curve provided that it's non-singular. So this shape of elliptic curve is what we call the Weierstrass curve. So singularities is something where um, we're asking that the partial derivative, so this is a Jacobi criterion, where we're saying that a point is singular if it also satisfies the two partial derivatives. So it has to be on the curve and it has to satisfy these two equations. Now, point on the elliptic curve does not mean if you're over, say, finite field with three elements that you check all possible combinations, like all pairs x, y, well, nine of those, and see, ah, oh, nothing happens here. It means you have to look over the field you add, the k where it's defined, the defining field means where these coefficients live, and all extension fields. So it's a property that is a geometric property that means you're looking over the algebra, over an algebraic closure. Now, a curve is called non-singular if it doesn't have a singular point, and if there's at least one singular point, the curve is singular. So here are two stereotypical examples of singular curves, which would otherwise satisfy the Weierstrass equation. So the one on the uh, left here, we call the cusp, and the other one we call the node. And you see that the cusp is something where you have these two um, parts coming in and form a pointy part, so that's the cusp thing, and you don't have a defined, a well-defined um, direction of the tangent. So talk, looking at the partial derivatives means you're looking at the tangents. Also in the other one, um, we have a node, so when you come in um, here in this crossing point, you have both these tangents would be the valid ones. And so a elliptic curve is a non-singular curve that satisfies this equation. We also need to have some ways of identifying elliptic curves, and that's why isomorphism is coming. So an isomorphism is a map between two elliptic curves, which is defined everywhere. So that means it's given by polynomials. We don't have any denominators. And a valid transformation, a valid map, is something which um, doesn't modify the shape of the curve. So we're starting this Weierstrass equation with a y squared term, so that has to stay monic and there shouldn't be any um, coefficient, well, any degree larger than 2 for the y, and no degree larger than 3 for the x. So that means we have some restriction on what we can do. So we can, for instance, take y and take y plus x, well, that would introduce the xy term, which is already there, so it changes the coefficient, it gets another x squared term, and so on, so those are fine. Um, so we can move y by some linear in x and linear, and we can also, well, be careful about this one. I said it has to stay monic, and now I'm saying, well, there's an alpha equivalent 3, but I'm also introducing an alpha squared for the x. And that means I have the alpha 3 squared from the y squared and alpha 2 cubed from the x squared, so I get it monic again if I take the whole equation and divide by alpha to the 6. When I transform x, I can't do anything other than just this very degree 1 linear map, because as soon as I move anything in x in there, I would get it in y in there, I would get a y cubed, which would be outside the correct shape. And so if you have um, this set, so these are isomorphisms between elliptic curves. And for instance, we can use these to make our curve equations simpler. And so that's what I want to give as an example. So I want to show you an isomorphism 
to make our curve a little bit simpler. And remember that we have this y squared plus a1xy plus a3y term. And if, if I have calculated it larger than 3 or actually larger than 2 for this one, I can just do a transformation of variables and get rid of this extra term. So I'm changing y to being y minus, well, the term in x there divided by 2. If I then square that, then the x, well, the middle term, is going to be exactly this extra term, so they cancel out, and I will be left with some a1 squared x squared plus 2 of the middle terms, and then a3 squared, all divided by 4. And, well, those are pure in, in x terms, so I can move them on the right-hand side. So I'm having new a2s, a4, and a6, so I put a prime there. And I have simplified my equation a bit. And then I can do this further, another isomorphic transformation, this time leaving the y unmodified and changing the x. And I want to get rid of the a2 prime x squared term there, and I'm modifying it well, well by completing, well, the cubic, so I'm taking x goes to x minus a2 prime over 3. And then this resulting form, so there we normally write that the curve coefficients are called c4 and c6, or a and b, and depending which textbooks you're looking at, they might also have some um, as in like a 48 running around, some extra devices. So this equation is called Weierstrass form, and that is normally what we use for cryptography when we're dealing with large finite fields. So elliptic curve in short Weierstrass form, this equation there, um, we have a much easier way of saying it. it's non-singular. Then we just look at the right hand side is this x cubed plus c4x plus c6 term. And then the curve is non-singular if the right hand side has only single roots over again, well, any extension field, so over the splitting field of that polynomial. And that we know as the discriminant of the polynomial is non-zero. Or put the other way around, if it's zero, then there's a singularity. Now, if you want to stick with this form, then I cannot do any linear transformations anymore. The only thing I can do is scaling the x and the y with these alpha cubed and alpha square terms. And then when I do this, well, it doesn't affect those terms, but it changes what the c4 and the c6 are. So the c4 has an extra x, and x gets changed to alpha squared x, and then I divide by alpha to the 6. So I have my alpha squared divided by alpha 6. So I'm getting that the new c4, so the c4 prime is the old c4, divided by alpha to the 4. And then the c6 term doesn't have any alpha to begin, or doesn't have any x to begin with, and so it gets c6 prime c6 divided by alpha to the 6. A thing which we'll need a bit later on is a, called the J-invariant, and that is an invariant of isomorphism classes, so of curves under these isomorphisms. Um, well, you can look at this formula. It's, you see that when you put in some alpha there, this will all be cancelling out. You'll have an alpha to the 6 on the top, you'll have an alpha to the um, 6 on the bottom, or rather, actually, <laughs> to the 12. Um, and so this J is invariant under these isomorphisms. It actually covers a bit more than just rational isomorphisms. So it's gonna it's covering also isomorphisms over extension fields. Depending where this alpha lives, you might actually be leaving k-rational isomorphisms and going to larger field isomorphisms. And J doesn't care about this because well these scaling factors just divide out. So it's a invariant under isomorphisms, but it's not specific to the field. So it's under isomorphisms of k-bar. Then something you probably have seen if you took elliptic uh, cryptography course before is how to use elliptic curves for group operations. So for the Weierstrass curve, well, here's one of the examples. You have a cubic equation there, and so with a cubic equation you might have over the reals one or three roots. Here's an example of one root. And then you're seeing um, an addition law of how to add two points. So we have the points P1 and P2 here. And the shortest form of describing the addition law is that anything which is on a line, say these three points, that they add up to zero. Now zero in this um, group is called infinity, which you can imagine being all the way far out in the direction 
of the Y line. So that is the place where all lines parallel to Y meet well, at infinity. And so these three lines, well, P1 plus P2 plus, which I labeled here as minus P1 plus P2, those sum up to infinity. Also, when you're taking a vertical line, well, there are, this is an equation of y squared equals a polynomial x, so there are only two solutions to this one. So this one here is the negative of that one. And, well, infinity is, of course, on the line as well. And so the addition law you can just write with lines here is that you're taking two points, you sum them, you're getting another point of intersection with the curve, and then you mirror it with respect to the x-axis, and you're getting the result of adding p1 and p2. Now, this works for any pair of points, except for, well, I already showed you what, what to do when they are on a line that's vertical, but then they're just each other's negatives and their sum is infinity. But what happens if they are the same? So if I want to compute 2p, so if I'm doubling p, then, well, taking the same rule means I'm taking two times the point, so I want to have a line which has multiplicity 2 of intersection. So that means it's a tangent to the curve. And then I'm following the same rule and finding the third point of intersection. I mirror with respect to the x-axis and I'm finding the result of 2p. So if I have higher multiplicity, then this works. And so this tells you, not in formulas but in pictures, the addition law on the elliptic curve. So that means you can now go ahead and translate this to formulas, or I'll also have them on the later slide. Um, you can do elliptic curve cryptography. So anything you can do with a finite field in a group, you can also do with a group of points on the elliptic curve. We often use a different representation of uh, elliptic curves. So if you heard my cryptology course before with this, then you know that I'm a fan of Edwards curves. For this lecture unit, I'm actually going to use Montgomery curves a lot more. They look almost like Weierstrass curves. So they also have a square and a cubic equation here, but then they have an extra term here. So there's the, the square part, well, which was y squared before, is now this coordinate system b squared. That one is not monic. There's a b in front of it. This means the addition laws, which, well, I didn't write for the other ones, um, but they get slightly modified but it's still, you're taking the coordinates of the input points, you're doing some simple operations with those, and you're getting some results. And these are the formulas that we actually are needing in the future, so all of our operations will then take place in Montgomery curves. And so that's what I have them here. When you draw them, you again find something which looks like either of the two pictures, so there's always the point zero, 0 on this curve, so you have a point which um, has a vertical tangent, so that means it has order 2 at this point, and then you either have a point of order 4, well, sometimes either or, it's, it, it's least one of the following, or you have two other points of order 2, so then you have, well, a, a circle and this other part here. And if you're interested in finding more about elliptic curves of how to compute on them efficiently, uh, what else they could look like, please take a look at the EFD, so the Elliptic Explicit Formulas Database, where you can find those for this unit on isogenies, this part is sufficient.